When the latest 6th generation Nissan Altima was introduced for the 2019 model year, several firsts were notable, but how much more gas does the standard all-wheel drive system use? What are owners saying about reliability four years out? And what do you need to know about two frustrating problems and one apparent design oversight that have left some owners furious? I've got that and more coming up for you, but first, let's meet this machine. Here's me driving the 2019 Altima back when it was a brand new car in its first year on sale. I'll be popping in from the archives to give you a little recap of the Altima from back when this sixth and current generation was brand new, and at the time one of seven new all-wheel drive vehicles available for under 30,000 Canadian. For the first time, the Altima was not only offered with all-wheel drive, but it was standard on every trim grade. New 19-inch wheels became available as well, but stay tuned for a caution on those later. Altima joins the Legacy, the Fusion, and a very small number of other mainstream sedans with all-wheel drive. So if you want to drive a car, like a car car, and that means sitting lower in the cabin, closer to the road, being surrounded by the interior rather than sitting up above it all, and you get a lower center of gravity, better handling, better mileage, and the list goes on. We get all of that here with power going to all four wheels for when the weather outside is lousy. So here's another option for you and a pretty good one. The V-Motion styling language gives a more alert and assertive look, as well as a prominent after-dark lighting signature, an onboard look for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, as well as a 7-inch advanced drive assist display, zero-gravity seats, and a wide range of the market's latest safety and driver assist features. Many of these came bundled under Nissan's Pro Pilot system, which was standard in 2019 on Altima SV and Platinum trim grades. The system can automatically maintain your speed and following distance, help you stay centered within your lane, and even display current speed limit information. Drivers can toggle it on and off via a blue button on the steering wheel, and keep an eye on it via corresponding on-screen infographics, which makes it easy for new drivers to try the system out whenever they like, and to keep an eye on what it's doing. And if this will be your first new car in many years, and if you've never had any of these sort of high-tech safety and communications features before, there's little cause for feeling overwhelmed because like all of the sort of standard controls elsewhere on board, all of Ultima's high-tech stuff is easily learned and becomes second nature to use before too long at all. Under the hood, it's a 2.5-liter four-cylinder with 182 horsepower and 178 pounds of torque. 80% of the parts in this engine are new or redesigned from previous versions, and the sole transmission offering is Nissan's Xtronic CVT. The new for 2019 all-wheel drive system, fitted to all models, can deliver up to 50% of the engine's torque to the rear axle when required, and shoppers upgrading from a previous generation Altima to the new 6th generation car will enjoy all-wheel drive traction with only a slight increase to fuel consumption. In a city, the all-wheel drive equipped Altima will drink 9.3 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers. The previous front drive generation drank 8.7 to cover that same distance. That's 100% more driven wheels for about 7% more of your fuel dollars. So here's how to check a used Nissan Altima before you buy. Automatic Emergency Braking Malfunction Enough owners of various Nissan models reported trouble with this system that a class action lawsuit was filed. The main issues revolve around false positives when the vehicle brakes automatically for no reason, as well as warning and error messages from the system. So a few pointers here as this issue relates to the Altima specifically. First, protect yourself from electronic malfunctions of all sorts by making sure the battery and charging system in the car you're considering is healthy. Even if the original battery is just one to two years old, have it checked and replaced if required. Do not underestimate the importance of a fresh and healthy battery to the proper functioning of systems like these, or the likelihood that the factory battery in your new car may only last two or three years. So drive your car regularly for an extended period of time, 20 minutes or more once a week should be good for improved battery health. Or consider the use of a trickle charger while your vehicle's parked for extended periods. Again, these two steps can help fend off a world of electronic headaches by keeping your battery healthy. Next, be sure the vehicle you're considering is free of damage to its bumpers or windshield, and that the front and rear bumpers are aligned and mounted properly. Sensors behind the vehicle's grille and bumpers need to be aligned precisely to function the right way, and damage or poor quality collision repairs can cause issues. During ownership, regularly clean that radar sensor, the vehicle's front emblem, and other sensor locations according to the instructions in the owner's manual. Some owners even recommend cleaning behind the grille emblem as well. It houses the Ultima's forward radar unit. And even a thin film of dirt or splattered insect can affect the system's operation. According to the owner's community, software updates may be required to successfully fix issues like these. Software updates are installed at the dealership during regular servicing. 
meaning a dealer serviced used Ultima is more likely to have updated system software installed already. Nissan has also updated or replaced engine control modules in affected cars in some cases. And if you're interested in learning a lot more information about this, I'd suggest heading over to autoconnectedcar.com and checking out Lynn Walford's story. Note that opting for a 2020 or newer unit will help you steer clear of what seems to be a first year issue for this model. Another is the brake pedal switch. In 2019, Nissan recalled several thousand Altimas to check for a brake pedal switch bracket, which may have been mounted incorrectly and caused the brake pedal switch to remain active even when the pedal isn't being pressed. In addition to falsely lighting up the brakes, this could cause problems with shifting gears, cruise control operation, or even engine starting. Thankfully, the fix is easy and was covered by a recall. To see which, if any, recalls apply to the used Altima you're considering, just head to their Canadian recall site and key in the VIN. Be sure to try the backup camera in a variety of different situations and lighting conditions. Some owners have reported poor image quality or striping of the image, as well as video feeds that only appear after a considerable delay. Some of these issues may be more apparent in shady areas or low light settings. This type of problem can be caused by damaged wiring, typically at a point where the trunk lid wiring harness moves or bends. In other cases, the backup camera module itself could be defective. Just keep in mind that Nissan recalled over 1.2 million vehicles to address defective backup cameras, typically with a software update which may have already been applied to the vehicle you're considering. While you're paying attention to the backup camera, be sure to test the infotainment system too, confirming proper Bluetooth connectivity, functionality of all USB ports, updated mapping software, and more. Some owners have reported a concerning clunking sound from the rear of their Altimas in certain situations, many have not. Start your test drive by confirming that no loose objects are stored in the vehicle's rear seat, trunk, or spare tire well that could shift or move and create noise. Next, quiet the vehicle's cabin and drive at a reasonable speed, over some bumps, dips, and potholes, carefully listening for a clunking sound from the rear seat or trunk area. If you hear it, have a technician see the vehicle before you buy. Noting that a 2019 technical service bulletin from Nissan helped technicians at dealerships identify and address this problem, typically by installing a new set of rear shocks under warranty. Remember, a healthy, used Nissan Altima should handle rough roads without any clunking or unwanted sound effects from beneath the vehicle. And if you hear anything unusual, you should have the vehicle inspected professionally before you buy. So here's an important caution for potential shoppers. According to one member of the owner's community, you should take note of the wheel size on your new Altima, as well as the spare tire provisions located in its trunk. This owner shared his experience with mounting his temporary spare to his Altima, which was equipped with 19-inch wheels, with the smaller spare tire mounted alongside three larger 19s. The speed difference between the wheels caused the all-wheel drive system to overheat, resulting in a warning to pull over and park. So note that the use of mismatched tire sizes is known to be harmful to all-wheel drive systems, so consider skipping a model with the 19-inch wheels or upgrading to a full-size spare. 